When we hear passive real estate investing, most people think of buying properties and renting them out. But what if I tell you that it isn't about passive investing at all, yet there's still effective ways of getting passive income from real estate. Today, I want to make a practical episode and walk you through different platforms that can help you get into real estate investing and receive true passive income. To understand why buying rental properties isn't passive investing, let's first define passive income. Basically, it is a profit that one set does not require much additional effort, but it doesn't mean you don't have to do anything at all. In the beginning, you need to get the whole system set up and running, and eventually you won't do much and still get income. This definition clearly explains why renting out your properties isn't a passive process. Here are several reasons. The first one, it's a so-called house with a surprise. Real estate can have many hidden problems especially when its price is below market value. This could be caused by rodents, mold, an old added, or bad wiring. What does it mean for you? It means added expenses and time devoted to fixing those issues. And that doesn't sound passive at all. Next, the bank might eat up your income. When you buy a house to rent it out, you will most likely take a mortgage. Sometimes the cost of rent and monthly mortgage payments can be the same. And in this case, you're earning nothing. And if the mortgage payment is higher than your rental income, then you will be in the negative. But that won't happen to you because you're educating yourself with our content. Another reason why renting out isn't a passive income is that you may need to actively manage your properties. If you can't afford to hire a property manager, you will have to solve all the issues by yourself. Plus, you must regularly communicate with the tenants and keep track of the house expenses and taxes, which can be very exhausting. I've experienced this myself, and if you want to know all the details, check out this episode after you finish with this video. But look, I'm not saying that buying rental properties is bad. Not at all. What I'm saying is that it is not totally passive and you must understand that before purchasing any rental home. For those who only want to invest in real estate, no worries, there are several strategies to get true passive income with real estate. One of them, it's REITs or Real Estate Investment Trusts. What is that? Those are companies that own properties, they buy them and rent them out. And to get funding, they sell shares. To start investing in REITs, all you have to do is buy those shares. And you can begin with just $10. How much can you earn? Well, that will depend on the type of REIT you choose. For example, residential REITs give an average return of almost 15% per year. And if you want to give REITs a try, let's see how you can start investing. First, you should decide what investing platform you should use. This could be Fidelity, Fundrise, or Vanguard, for example. In fact, let's check how Fundrise works. So here's the Fundrise website. So for those who are actually interested, all you got to do is to click here on Get Started. And to access this website, all you got to do is just to click on the link down in the description box below or just simply type in fundrise.com and then it will take you straight into this platform. So to learn about what they have to offer in real estate, all you got to do is just come here and click on real estate. And as you go down, then you get to learn about what they have to offer. So their portfolio is composed of 48.9% of built to rent properties, meaning properties that are built and they put them on the market to be rented right away. Uh, Multifamily is 29.3%, industrial properties 15.2%, and 6.6% um, .6 allocated to other type of uh, real estate. So as you go down, you get to learn a little bit about what they have to offer with multifamily apartments, the total residential units that they have, and what markets uh, they are located. And if you want to read more, all you got to do is just to click on the red fonts and it will take you to what they have to offer. Industrial properties, how many of them do they have, single family rentals, and then more details about the rental portfolio. And there's a section here and where Fundrise compares their performance in comparison to other public REITs or the S&P. 500. Investing in REITs might be one of the easiest ways to generate passive income with real estate, but let's see other options as well. The second one is crowdfunding. 
The name speaks for itself. These are specialized platforms where investors pull their funds together to invest in real estate. As a result, they receive a total profit, which is then shared amongst participants. Why might that be a good idea? Imagine you want to invest in promising real estate. It looks profitable and it seems like its value will only grow, but it is too expensive. So instead of skipping this option altogether, you collaborate with other investors and share the profit. This is especially common for commercial real estate, like large commercial buildings. Basically, crowdfunding is a fractional ownership, meaning that you don't own the whole property, but only a part of it. And there may be dozens of other owners apart from you. For example, you may get 100th of a luxury villa with a total value of $8 million. Then you will have to pay $80,000 instead of $8 million. And 80 grand is like a typical down payment for a mortgage. So this option is much more manageable. Usually a crowdfunding platform works like a marketplace. It connects investors with sponsors who raise capital. The most important question when making any investment is how much can you earn? Globally, real estate crowdfunding returns range somewhere between 10 and 12% on average. Where does this profit come from? Basically, the property is rented out and each owner gets their profit according to the share they own. You have two options to become a fractional owner through an investment firm or independently. An example of this is when you buy a property with people you know. However, this is a lot less common. To invest with an investment firm, you can check out companies like Arrive Home, which happens to be backed by Jeff Bezos. In fact, let's do a quick walkthrough of the page. So here's the Arrive Home website. For those who want to create an account, just simply come here on to sign up. And for those who are interested in learning more about the platform, you can come here and invest and see the different type of investments that they have to offer. So in this site, you can click and see all the available investments they have. Or if you want something more specific, then you can click on single family residential, vacation rentals or funds. So just to give you a quick walkthrough, let's say you're interested in this channel, although this is 100% funded, but just to give you an idea, the Rachel is a single family residential and is in Tennessee and it has 1000 investors. When you click on it, you can actually see the value, pictures of the property and a brief description of what it has to offer. Now, if you want to learn more about how to navigate the site or maybe additional information, all you got to do is just come here to their learning center and they have everything from help and FAQs. Uh, you get to check how it works. So just click on the how it works site and then it will explain you everything about what you need to know about how the website in itself works. And if you're more of a visual person and you don't feel like reading, then you can also sign up to their webinars as well. The next option for passive real estate investing, it's real estate syndications. Real estate syndications allow you to become a limited partner of a property. It could be an apartment building, an office building, for example, and you can even become a limited partner in a private equity fund. What's in it for you? Well, partners get a share of the income generated by the real estate property or a fund. With this strategy, you can get up to 12% returns per year. But you have to understand that syndication deals are illiquid. It means that you can't turn them into cash quickly and you're often required to hold your investments for five to 10 years. The good thing is that their returns tend to be stable, so no need to be afraid of volatility. Before you decide to invest in real estate syndications, you should know that there are a couple of limitations. First, most real estate syndications are only open to accredited investors. Can you become one of them? Yes, but only if you have a net worth of $1 million, excluding your primary residence or an income of over $200,000 a year or $300,000 a year if married. The second limitation is that the minimum investment amount typically exceeds $10,000. As you can see, this option is not for everyone. But if it's something you want to consider, here's what you need to do. First, you apply to a firm that offers a syndication investment. Next, you go through their verification process. Be aware that they will check the following. 
bank and other account statements, credit reports, W-2s or other income statements, your tax returns, and possibly any other certifications issued by FINRA if you have them available. If all of your documents are in order, then you should be able to start investing with them. The fourth option for passive real estate investing is remote property ownership. What is that? It's when you own a rental property that isn't located close to your primary residence. In this case, you won't be able to manage tenants yourself and you will need to hire a property manager, making your investment passive. This is exactly what I do. I live in New York and I invest in Florida. This is especially important if the houses around your neighborhood are expensive and you decide to make your money's worth by investing elsewhere. If you want to follow this path, finding the right property manager will be the key to your success. How do you find one? Well, one way is to go to your local property management companies in the area and check out their services and fees and make sure you read the, the reviews to see what the customers are saying. Another option is to find a property manager on Zillow. Let me show you how that works. So we're here in Zillow. All you got to do is to come into the section where it says agent finder and then you're going to go to property managers. So let's click on that and here you go. You can find a property manager based on location. You can either type in the address of your property or just simply type in the zip code. If you know a name of the property manager, you want to look that person up, you can do that as well. Any specialties you want to focus and any language requirements that you want to have in a property manager. So let's say I want to check out a property manager in Manhattan. So I'm typing in the zip code in Manhattan and you will see a list of the different property managers available. In fact, there's plenty of them to choose from. And uh, let's say I want to check this person. So I have Elpis Anya. And when I click on her profile, it's going to show me what her specialties are. And then the property management, there is her profile with all the description, her professional information, and the languages that she speaks, English and Polish. And there is her reviews, right? In case you want to check her out. And if this person doesn't fulfill your professional criteria, then you can come in and pick another person all the way down the list. And you can do this in all 50 states. And there you have it. Four different ways to invest in real estate passively. Which one seems the most appealing for you? Share your thoughts down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.